In this video, I want to show you how to analyze the data. We're still in the assignment task, and in each task, you can go down to analyze. Uh, if you're there, you see uh, which file you're working on, so you can select a stored data file. Currently, we only have one data file. As you see, uh, the, the date, the year, the month, and the day, uh, as well as the time, are in the data file. Um, you can also upload files here or copy and paste data and save it as an additional file. You can have multiple files here, but currently we have only one file and I just want to show you what you can do with it. Um, here uh, is the data. Every uh, line here corresponds to one trial, so that means there are 25 trials and there's 25 lines. Uh, there are six columns. Now it's important to note that these columns do not exactly correspond to the column numbering of the experimental code because there you could actually uh, put words between quotes and then they would become one column. So for example, we had this as an identifier, a human readable identifier of the condition uh, as the first column, but here there are three separate columns and that is for a reason we really want that because we want to use this information separately. The fourth column contains the correctness or incorrectness of the trial, the status. A one means correct, a two means uh, the participant pressed the wrong button, a three would mean the participant did not respond at all. That would be a timeout. The fifth column is the response time and the sixth column is the name of the block. So we have five trials that are called block training and 20 trials that are called block real. Again, that's also useful because in a meaningful response time analysis, you probably would not analyze how perform people performed in the training block unless you're really interested in um, the mechanisms underlying learning. So it all depends on what sort of study you do. Now, uh, you can enter the information uh, of the columns to actually analyze this. So first of all, here's, here in set the meaning of the columns in the data file, which column has the reaction time. Now, as we've seen here, that was column five. So I'm going to say here, okay, five. Do you want to consider only trials which follow a successful trial? Well, for this demonstration, I'm not going to do this, but um, in real studies, you might want to do this. This is fairly common in cognitive psychology, and you can read more about that when you click the question mark. Which column has the status? Now that was the fourth column. Uh, the grouping variables that I'm interested in are one and two. And that is because they contain, as you see here, um, the information where the stimulus was presented and what type of a stimulus it was, whether it was a left or a rightward pointing uh, arrow. Now, instead of that, I could also just use uh, the third column uh, as a grouping variable because uh, these two columns, they result either in compatible or incompatible status. Uh, which column has the block information? That's column six. Now, that might be useful, for example, if you want to exclude certain blocks, such as the training block. Uh, I won't do this for this demonstration, but you can do it. You can also trim your response time data. That's sometimes something that people do, for example, if there are many outliers, if people do not concentrate well, or if they are distracted. There are various reasons for doing that. And you can plot the timeline and the histogram. And if I do that, I go down here and I then see the uh, actual the information about these four conditions that result from the combination of columns one and two. So if we, for example, just look at this first bit here, it says condition left position, left arrow. There were eight trials. Uh, the mean response time was 507 milliseconds. The median response time was 510 milliseconds and the error rate was 12.5%. And so it goes on. You also get a timeline of the responses. What you see here is the sequence, uh, the order in which the trials were carried out by me. Uh, what you see, for example, is that I got somewhat faster over time. That is a very normal uh, learning process that you often see in these sort of data sets. Um, what we also see is error trials. Error trials are identified by a red dot. Uh, so you also you can basically see here that there is variability and so on. Um, if we go further down, we get a histogram of the data. 
So here uh, in this analyze section, you basically have a quick way of looking at your data and not just looking at the averages, but also just see what happens. Because sometimes what happens is that people might work quite well, but there might be a few trials where they were distracted and they didn't respond at all. So it's really useful to look at the whole sequence of trials whenever you do uh, data analysis. So that is the analysis uh, section. I should probably mention that you can also do a group analysis if you wish to do so. Uh, and then you get a table with the uh, averages of all participants in all conditions. And you can use that, for example, in SPSS for an analysis of variance.